Good afternoon. We're back and we have a beautiful Les Paul Standard on the bench. I've had this guitar here before. This is the second time I got it. Uh, the customer that ha owns this guitar uh, is a really good customer of mine. He has brought me all of his guitars. Um, he owns several. He has also sent me referral after referral after referral. Um, and I always try to treat him with a little bit of special care. Uh, he gave me this guitar when he first bought it. He said, oh man, they did a free store setup for me and uh, it just doesn't play well. And I had told him several times, just give it to me. Yes, it's a brand new guitar, but that doesn't mean anything. They still need to be checked out and set up properly by someone who knows what they're doing. And the guys at the guitar shop don't always have your best interest in mind. Uh, they're just going to make sure that the strings aren't slammed down to the fretboard. And they'll usually do some stupid adjustments just to get the strings off the fretboard and send it back to you. I always check neck relief, pickup height, intonation, uh, what have you? Somebody likes me. Oh, my Amazon order has been delivered. Stand by. Sorry about that. I'm back. Anyway, um, so he bought the guitar. He, he takes it home. It doesn't play well, of course. Gives it to me. I send it back to him after I did my full deal on it. And it needed a lot of adjustment. If I remember right, pickups were way high. Uh, the, the, the break angle on the strings was touching the saddle over the bridge was too tall. A lot of different things. Anyway, I did my full thing on it, gave it back to him, and he loved it. The moral of the story is every customer, every player, I don't care how experienced, how long you've been playing, whether you're a beginner or been playing for 100 years, I say it over and over and over again, they deserve to have their instrument play as well as it can possibly play. And there are bass lines for setting up these string instruments, whether it's a guitar or a bass or a, a, a mandolin, I don't care. There are bass adjustments that are kind of laws and rules within reason. You can Some guys like their action higher or lower. Okay, I get that. But once you get it set in there and give it back to the customer and he likes it, great. So he gives it back to me. This was four or five months ago. He gives it to me the other day, and he says, just take it and do your thing. And I go, but what, what, what's wrong with it? What's your complaint? What is your concern? What is it doing or not doing? And he says, nothing. I, I just want you to do your thing on it. it. It's been several months, and I love it when I get a guitar back from you, and it plays like brand new again. That means a lot to me. That's that just means a lot. Um, so I'm happy to hear things like that. Uh, initially, what I see is it's dirty as hell, so I'm going to clean it up for him, and I'm going to chastise him. Treat your junk, cheap guitars like this, but not... This is a beautiful guitar, and it's just got grease and schmutz and DNA all over it, and I, I don't know how he could do that in five months. So we're going to use one of my favorite products. Uh, let me see if I can get it in the movie. Uh, I love this stuff. I love a lot of their products, and this is what we're going to clean it up with today. Uh, before that, and before we get started taking baseline measurements, just to recheck my work from months ago, uh, I've gotten some comments that said, hey, we, we never see your face. You never put your face in the video. We hear you. We love what you do. It's, it's cool how you fix and work on guitars, um, but we don't know what you look like, and you never say hello. So here I am just saying hello. Uh, my name is Len Blackjack Lucci. I love to work on guitars. I believe everybody deserves to have their instrument play as well as it can possibly play. Uh, now you've seen my face and you've met me. You know what I look like. Let's get to work. See if we can get everything set back up here. Get us in the movie. Make sure it's not too dark, too bright. Uh, crooked. Bear with me, folks. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, so, baseline measurements, of course, I always start. And again, I did all of this, I'm going to say, five months ago. 
um, but we're going to check it today just to make sure. Okay, I'm only human. I am fallible. It's possible that I missed something. Um, but what I can tell you is, unless somebody puts screwdrivers or tools on it, this stuff doesn't change. Once you set it, it's nuts and bolts. They're not going to vibrate loose. They're not going to come out by themselves. The guitar fairy doesn't come in the middle of the night and unscrew and change everything. What can change is neck relief. We live in Florida. Humidity, wild swings in humidity and dryness can change the neck. You know, from back bow to banana, neck relief in general can, can be changed. Um, if it's a really stable neck, then not very often, but you never know. So that's the first thing we're going to check. And capo at the first fret, and then we're going to check at 12 thousandths at the seventh fret. And it is just kissing the feeler gauge, which is what it's supposed to do. It's exactly where I left it. Which tells me a couple of things, because five months ago, we were in winter. It's now June, so five months ago, we were in winter. And yes, we have a winter in Florida. It's just, we don't get snow, but the air is so much drier. And now, the humidity is off the charts. So, if it was going to change, it would have changed. But it didn't, which tells me that this neck and this guitar is very stable. Um, so... We'll move on to the next thing, which would be string height. Just to double check my measurements from before. Where are my bionic eyes? Bear with me. Let's get these on. I can't read that without them. And at the 12th fret, we are looking at just over four. A little bit more than four at the 17th. That's where I left it. Barely over four. Right at four, four, four. Just under four. That's where I set them. Now, some guys will tell you they should be 464s here and 364s here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But he told me he loves the way the guitar plays. This is where I set up a bass line on on Gibson guitars, especially Les Pauls like this, uh, right around four at the you know the twelfth fret and the seventeenth fret should be just a scotch over on the low side, and when by the time you get to the high E, should be at four or just below, which is exactly where I left this guitar when I gave it to him five months ago. Um, that being said, pickup height. Exactly where I left it. Exactly where I left it. I like it. I like it a lot. I don't see any reason to adjust this guitar again. There's nothing wrong with the strings. I would say they've gone about halfway through their life. I generally go about four to six months on a set of strings on my bases. Um, but that's just me and the type of string that I use. These are Ernie Balls. They're showing some signs of corrosion. So within the next couple of months, probably this guitar is going to be ready for a restring. Just to keep it fresh. The longer you play on a set of strings and how often you play on them is going to dictate how often you change them. So the player of the instrument is going to know this. And he's going to tell me. If he said, I don't like my strings, they're all gacked up. When he gave it back to me this time, he would have said, put a, you know, a new set of strings on. But he didn't. And I don't see that they need to be changed yet. And all the measurements are exactly where I like them. I'm going to check one last thing. And people laugh, and I always get a bunch of comments about this. But our brake angle, it goes from the bridge over the saddle. You don't want it touching the saddle. And you should be able to slide a piece of paper underneath that string and just underneath it. If it's got enough room for a piece of paper to slide under there, and this one does, which is, again, exactly where I left it, as far as the height of the bridge and the way the string brake angle goes over the saddle, is exactly where I left it. Um, I'm going to check the intonation, but 
my mind is telling me that everything else was the same, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the same. Let's get some, see what we got. Check our tuning, get up tuned up the pitch. He plays in 440, so it's a little flat, probably because it's been <clears throat> in and out. In and out of the house, in and out of the car, in and out of the case. Well, this thing really responds light, a light touch on the tuning. The last guitar I had here was a cheapy, and clearly this one is not a cheapy. This is a high-end guitar. It's a real Les Paul standard. I think it was a, I think it's a, a, a 2016. I don't recall. I dated it the first time I had it, but it's a relatively modern Gibson Les Paul standard. This is as real as you get, and the last guitar I had was not, and you had to really wind on those peg heads to get it to change this. Slight touches, slight touches. Uh, e, e. Dead on. Dead on. Dead on. I mean, talk about a guitar that's stable. And I'm, I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments like I always do. Ah, oh, you got to check that in your lap. If you do it on the bench, you're bending the neck. No, you're not. Stop. Just stop it. <clears throat> the intonation is, I mean, dead on perfect. To use an industry term, it's dead on balls accurate. Um, love it. It's exactly where I left it. Uh, I'm not going to show you cleaning up the guitar. You don't need to know that. You got to meet me today. I explained about a, a good customer of mine. Um, he just wants me to give it back to him and say everything's a okay, which it is. We will talk soon. Be kind to each other.